One of the great questions regarding the future of humanity is just what are we going to do with the Milky Way? The Fermi Paradox shows us that, so far as we can see, it's wide open and ripe for the picking, if we can get out there. And while great distances and energy required hinder ideas of colonization right now, time solves that problem to a degree. The galaxy ends up being rather small when you have millions of years on your hands to cross it. So how do we do that? No one yet knows for sure. And no doubt new ways will come up as study of the subject moves forward. But as far as this point in time, here are 10 ways we might conceptually settle the galaxy. Number 10. Advanced Scouts and Light Sails In order to settle a star system in the galaxy, it's probably best to know what's there first before you send living beings out there to do it. You might spot an exoplanet that at first seems clement. You may detect no biosignatures or technosignatures there, meaning that it seems to have no life. But that doesn't really mean much, in that you'll only see evidence of life or civilizations on exoplanets from a distance in certain, very specific situations, so you need to scout out these worlds directly in advance. There are many hypothetical ways to do this, but many of them from the past are unnecessarily large. You don't need a ship the size of Battlestar Galactica to go out and check out a nearby world. Rather, it may make more sense to send something very small, a tiny spacecraft, perhaps the size of an apple or a walnut, driven by directed laser from your home world using a light sail. Even the light of the stars themselves might be used in this way. Small and efficient seems to make sense here, at least for scouting purposes, but one has to wonder how small is small. Decades ago, we envisioned giant spacecraft as interstellar probes. Now it's very small spacecraft as our technology has miniaturized. Does this continue? Do spacecraft from alien civilizations become microscopic at some point? If small is the rule, then the solar system could be littered with such probes and we'd never know it. Needle in a haystack is not a strong enough analogy here. Number 9. Project Daedalus and Nuclear Bomb Propulsion One of the more ambitious conceptual ideas on just how to head out on interstellar voyages was known as Project Orion. This proposal stems from a series of older ideas stretching to the early decades of the 20th century, though it was only seriously studied in the late 1950s. The concept is simple. Make atomic bomb technology work as a method of propulsion. The basic concept is straightforward. You build a huge ship and then drop atomic bombs behind it that detonate and push your spacecraft along through the use of a blast plate. This concept actually saw quite a bit of development, though there were questions about issues that might develop with that radical of a form of propulsion. Ultimately though, the concept was never realized, due mainly to nuclear test ban treaties and a general fear of fallout when the ship was close to Earth. But the idea of nuclear propulsion of a different sort came onto the table in the 1970s in the form of Project Daedalus. Here a fusion rocket would have been used rather than bombs to propel a multi-stage interstellar spacecraft carrying tens of thousands of tons of cargo to another star system at about 12% the speed of light. While this concept was also never realized, it does still offer a future possibility for humanity in reaching out for the stars. Number 8. Hollow Asteroids and Generational Ships The concept of getting on a ship knowing that you will never reach your destination within your lifetime is perhaps a little disconcerting at first. You would not just be condemning yourself to spending the rest of your life on that ship, but also your offspring and their offspring, generation after generation until, after centuries, your descendants reach their destination. This is the concept of a generational ship and remains one of the more viable ways we might actually colonize the galaxy. And in the great scheme of things, it would not take that long to establish outposts all over the Milky Way. The reason for this is that the Milky Way is only about 100,000 light years across. At sublight speeds, establishing a presence throughout it could probably be done in 10 million years or so, at least in principle. In a universe that has trillions of years to live, that's not that much time. The original ideas for generational ships come from rather surprising sources. Early writers on the subject include the father of astronautics, Konstantin Tsiolkovsky, and rocketry pioneer Robert Goddard, NASA's Goddard Space Flight Center. Yes, that guy. The idea requires that the ship be entirely self-sufficient in every way. Food for generations after generations of occupants would need to be grown. Everything would need to be recycled with 100% efficiency. And there is the human side to this. 
Imagine someone being born on the ship that doesn't want to be there, yet they can't ever leave it, opening up ethical issues. But it must also be said here that Earth works like that too, at least right now. It's sort of hard to quit Earth, though that may change in the coming years. Other issues include questions of what might culturally happen over generations. Would they cut ties with Earth? Would they develop politics that Earth doesn't like? Would they form factions? Would they wage wars with each other on the ship? Could their society break down to such an extent as to destroy the ship? Engineering such a ship has been envisioned to be everything from a hollowed out asteroid to a heavily shielded ship. It would be a daunting task, but again, is in principle possible. But there's one aspect of the generational ship idea that's rather interesting. Technology improves, so if a generational ship left to colonize a world a thousand light years away, and they cruised at a speed of say one tenth the speed of light, they might actually get beaten to their destination by future humans that have ships that can go faster. By the time these pioneers reached their destination, they may find a fully developed human colony already there. What happens if they aren't interested in letting anyone else in? Number 7. The Empire of Humanity and the Alcubierre Warp Drive The question of faster than light travel has been a constant theme in science fiction for many years. One that really was always more of a plot device than a concept at home with physics as far as we unraveled it across the 19th and early 20th centuries. Instead, the universe seems to have a universal speed limit that prevents travel, or any information exchange faster than the speed of light. And that's not just a term that applies to light. C can also be said to be a kind of speed of causality, or speed of time, or maximum speed of information transfer in the galaxy. But what if there was a way to move faster than light that did not violate the speed of light rule, but also doesn't openly violate the laws of physics? One option here is the Alcubierre warp drive, first formulated by a physicist Miguel Alcubierre after watching an episode of Star Trek The Next Generation. Here we have a ship that forms a warp field that separates a piece of space-time off from the rest of space-time. The ship within the bubble of separated space-time would not actually be moving inside space, it would be stationary, but the bubble of space-time around it would be moving and carrying the ship along with it. This would not be breaking the limit if the ship is not moving, given that space-time itself is not subject to the limit. Ultimately though, as with wormholes or any speculative methods of faster-than-light travel, it is fraught with problems such as massive amounts of energy needed to get it going, a means of slowing it back down, and massive amounts of radiation. And even after those, you'd still need a form of exotic matter to do it that has never been seen in nature, or do we have any idea how to create it? But say we did crack that technology in the far future, then we would have a tool that not only would allow us to build a galactic empire in the Milky Way in short order, but a multi-galactic empire spanning a large swath of the universe. Number 6. Slow and Steady All too often we think of our civilization in terms of being big. We have numerous, enormous cities built on this planet, and as our technology advances, we keep growing. In fact, the population of Earth right now is more than 7.5 billion and growing and some worry just how much longer that can be sustained. But that's a question of a single planet, not a universe. Or for that matter, a galaxy. The Milky Way contains over 100 billion stars. At our current numbers, if every single human owned a star system to themselves within this galaxy, well over 90% of the galaxy would still be unoccupied. Even when one tosses out violent short-lived stars, the amount of red dwarfs in the galaxy is still something on the order of 90% of the stars in the galaxy. Point is, we cannot colonize this galaxy in a meaningful way without a massive, continuous explosion of human population. One person cannot colonize a planet, it takes far more than that. So maybe galactic settlement doesn't happen very fast because we're slow at population growth. Granted that we might do it with machines, such as self-replicating probes, but those might take a bit to self-construct. Physicist Gerard O'Neill once speculated that it might take a century or more for such a thing to mine a star system and self-replicate. Point is, whether you're biologically reproducing or technologically self-replicating, this may take some serious time, and on a galactic scale, you may be limited in your expansion just by the numbers and the humdrum realities of reproducing, and you need the drive to do that, which is not guaranteed. Politics, distances, and realities may make further expansion undesirable, and stagnation may occur. You may colonize your galaxy in the end, but it may take far longer than you originally intended. And that actually already has been the rule 
though with exceptions with human space exploration so far. Number 5. Robbing Black Holes in the Halo Drive One of the funnest aspects of contemplating how humans might colonize the galaxy is that how we actually end up doing it might not have been thought of yet. As a result, sometimes a completely new conceptual way we might travel the stars comes on the scene. This happened recently with a concept called the Halo Drive. Conceived by Dr. David Kipping of Columbia University and fellow YouTuber over at the Cool Worlds channel, where he has a very nice overview video on the subject, link in the description below, along with an Event Horizon interview I did with him also linked, the Halo Drive offers a way to gain acceleration through the use of a laser and the gravity well of a black hole, where the laser gains energy as it loops around the black hole and returns the energy gain to the spacecraft. This opens the way for entire travel networks, highways between suitable binary black hole systems that might provide an efficient way for humanity in the future to at least begin laying the infrastructure of a galaxy spanning civilization. Number 4. Accomplish full colonization without ever leaving home. While it's true that there is a possibility that we may never fully understand the universe, there is also a possibility that we might. So what happens if we go through the centuries, or millennia, figure the whole thing out, conclude that we're probably alone, and there really doesn't seem to be much point to colonizing the real universe, at least as we know it to be real, and rather, we could construct one of our own and explore that instead. Or some variant thereof. Some humans have made a point of heading out and exploring this world. In fact, we've done it across our entire existence and spread ourselves across the entire planet, even to inhospitable places like Antarctica, while some will explore and head out into the universe, some will not, and will instead explore ideas internal to us. We do this now with novels, games, and all sorts of escapism. Some of it is total fantasy, but so what? It entertains us, and we enjoy the diversion. But how does this progress? What will be the next incarnation of this escapism? For some it might be the ability to live in a direct virtual reality in a universe that is that of J.R.R. Tolkien, Others may wish to explore a universe that is easier to understand, should a complete understanding of this one prove to be impossible, and perhaps that might even lead to clues about how the real one actually works. Will we lose track of this reality and forget the real universe entirely? Have we done that already? At the end of the day, does it really matter if your existence as you know it is in a reality that itself may not be real, or if it's in a virtual reality? Either way, it's existence of some variety, so could it be that alien civilizations that develop very advanced virtual realities simply lose interest in the actual universe insofar as they can and just tune out? Will we do that? Do many of us do that already? Number 3. Wormholes and Unknown Physics It has to be said that at this point in time we don't know everything. Vast areas of physics remain undescribed and it's always possible that as new descriptions of the universe are advanced, or already existent ones are refined, the new avenues to space travel faster than light might crop up. One example here are wormholes. They are an old idea, going back to Einstein, and might allow for rapid travel between two points in the universe through a wormhole. The problem is that we really don't know how to create one, or if they can exist in nature. The general consensus is that they would simply collapse and not allow travel through them and also would require, once again, some form of negative mass exotic matter. And there are other problems, such as if the wormhole would take one not only to another point in space, but time, creating causality problems. But if such a thing could ever be created and harnessed, it would be a game changer as far as galactic colonization for sure, one that's been well fleshed out in science fiction. But on this sort of thing, or indeed completely unknown future physics, it's best not to hold one's breath. Number 2. Temporary Death For decades now, companies here on Earth have offered a rather long shot service, reversing death. It's called cryonics and it is the ability to freeze a human corpse in hopes of reanimating it at some later date after the disease that was the cause of death is cured. While mainstream science is rightfully skeptical as to whether this approach could ever work, the basic idea in principle seems sound, but the human body is also very complicated and delicate, and this may be something that is forever outside our reach, even in the far future. But say for a moment it's not. Such technology could have profound effects on humanity's ability to colonize the galaxy. 
A state of temporary death would allow space travel over long periods of time and distances to be accomplished. When the travelers leave their home world, say Earth, they would do so in a state of death, essentially a complicated form of freezing known as vitrification. Then, upon reaching their destination, they could be revived to set up their colony or join a pre-existing one. This approach, of course, comes with many existential questions. What does it mean to wake up from one's own grave? Is it a starship at all, but rather a mausoleum, or some combination of both, should the mission not be a success? I can't imagine it would feel very nice waking up from centuries of frozen death. Nor do I think it would ever be a particularly pleasant notion going into such a state before leaving Earth. In any case, if this is indeed possible, it very likely lies in the far future, and may well be superseded by other technologies to extend life in the meantime. Number 1. Self-replicating probes and 3D printing humanity Whoever said that a species has to leave home to physically colonize a galaxy? If we were to attempt it right now, we would have trouble, a theme that's been present across this video. But we're at a stage of technological development where we can envision more. It has been pointed out, most famously in the form of the Fermi Paradox, that colonizing the galaxy actually doesn't take all that much time in the great scheme of things. Fermi asked that given that this is the case, then where is everyone? And the whole thing gets easier through the ideas of mathematician John von Neumann. He envisioned self-replicating machines that can construct copies of themselves using the raw materials of the galaxy, making the process of putting a probe in conceivably every star system in the galaxy pretty rapid and straightforward. So let's take that further. What of a von Neumann 3D printer that can not only print out copies of itself, but other things? Say it can print out biological beings. If so, we could send out probes that can print out copies of humans to colonize the galaxy. These printed humans could have the memories of humans that once existed back on Earth, or have a custom set of memories and knowledge specifically for the act of settling an exoplanet, or both. Or even custom genetics that allow them to live on an exoplanet that an unaltered human could not. Or, if the probes can't do it biologically at all, then they might print out technological analogs of humans, sentient robots to colonize worlds where oxygen and phosphorus just isn't in the cards. But one has to ask, in the end, wouldn't that just be cheating and the only fun way to colonize the galaxy is to head out there and do it ourselves? Thanks for listening, I am futurist and science fiction author John Michael Godier, currently personally disinterested in settling the galaxy. I'm needed here for many reasons beyond thinning the pastry herd. For corn's sake, the war with the garden weeds cannot simply be abandoned, nor the dust wars, or keeping the dishes in check. What of the ongoing laundry campaign? Though I guess we'd probably bring that one with us, and possibly the dishes. And be sure to check out my books at your favorite online book retailer and subscribe to my channels for regular, in-depth explorations into the interesting, weird, and unknown aspects of this amazing universe in which we live.